What is up everyone? My name is Ryan. I live in Cambodia. I travel a lot. I've traveled all over Southeast Asia. And today's video is about the language barrier in Southeast Asia. Will you be able to get by just speaking English? What countries in Southeast Asia speak the most English and the least English? What are some of my tips to break down that barrier? I'll even show you a product that, I mean, I would say it's probably the best pocket handheld translator available on the market right now. I'll cover all that. Cover it like your favorite blanket covers you in the evening as you drift off to sleep, right before you have that reoccurring dream, the one with the skeleton chasing you. Clearly the skeleton represents your troubled past. You can't run away from it, you have to face it. I know what you did last summer. <laughs> I am heading out to meet my friend Musto. You may remember him from this video. He has a channel here in Cambodia about investing in the country, but today I am not meeting up with him to take advantage of his investing knowledge. No, I need him for his language skills. I'm testing out this pocket translator. This is Time Kettle's Fluent Talk T1 handheld translator device. It can translate 40 different languages. It's easy to use, it's portable, it comes with an international SIM card that gives you data anywhere in the world for two years. No Wi-Fi needed. So with the help of Musto, we will put it to the test. How's it going? Come va? Sto benissimo, grazie. I'm fine. Thank you. Do you have any tips for people who want to learn a language? Hai qualche consiglio per chi vuole imparare una lingua? Devi fare pratica ogni giorno con qualcuno o devi guardare film perché i film ti aiuteranno molto. You have to practice every day with someone or you have to watch films because films will help you a lot. Did you watch Khmer films to learn Cambodian? Hai guardato i film di Kami per imparare il cambogiano? Sì, certo. Yes, certainly. What's your favorite Cambodian film? Qual è il tuo film cambogiano preferito? Il ragazzo che si possa affittare. The guy you can rent. Ok, beh, grazie mille per avermi aiutato a testare questo traduttore. Thanks to you too. It was a pleasure making the videos with you. The Fluent Talk T1 can handle eight of the 11 official languages of Southeast Asia. They even have English in a Singaporean accent. Hello, I am from Singapore and I like to eat curry fish head soup. Hello, I am from Singapore and I like to eat curry fish head soup. Yeah, that checks out. Please check the description below or the pinned comment to find a link to this product. So there are 11 countries in Southeast Asia and 10 official languages. That's a lot of variety. I'm sure most people planning to backpack Southeast Asia aren't going to Brunei or Timor-Leste. Those are the only two countries in Southeast Asia I haven't been to. But the other nine are popular tourist destinations, so I'm gonna concentrate on those. The Philippines, I believe, has the most English speakers. All their public schools teach in English. They say that two thirds of the population is fluent in English. In fact, there are a greater number of English speakers in the Philippines than there are in the UK. That's pretty crazy. And they even count the ones that you can't understand because their accents are so thick. Singapore has a well-educated population and a great mix of ethnicities. The common language for a lot of them is English, so your English will take you far in that country. There's also a lot of English in Malaysia. However, Malay, Mandarin, and Tamil are the most widely spoken languages in the country, so perhaps if somebody is going to learn an additional language, they might learn one of those instead of English. Also, because of British colonialism, there has been a bit of a pushback against English. For a very long time, it was the official language when teaching math and science in Malaysia. However, they changed that law in 2012. They're trying to get more Malay into the culture, I think. A doctor, a lawyer, a politician, those types of jobs will have a very high English proficiency in Malaysia, but the taxi drivers, probably not so much. Meanwhile, in a place like Cambodia, where I live, I would say that there's about a 50% chance your tuk-tuk driver is going to know at least a little bit of English. Tuk-tuk driver or taxi driver is a job that requires very little education, so I kind of like to use that as a scale of how much English is being spoken in the country. Now you could look at the EF English Proficiency Index. It ranks countries on English efficiency. However, I don't think it's a good way to determine how much English is being spoken. It can tell you who is speaking the best English, but as a traveler, I think it's more useful to have more people that know a little bit of English than it is to have fewer people speaking English, but at a higher level. 
Also, there's a lot of cheating on those tests. Cambodia is surprisingly good at English. They learn it at a very young age. If a family has expendable income to go towards educating their children, it's often spent at one of the many English schools across the country. This is probably because around 15% of Cambodia's economy is made up from tourism. So knowing a bit of English, knowing a lot of English can really help you land a better job. I can say the same thing for Thailand. 20% of their GDP is made up from tourism. So many people speak English and many people speak English well. I put them near the top of the list. However, I do think that in Thailand, it's easier to go off the beaten path. In a place like Cambodia, people don't really venture off the tourist trail too much. Off the beaten path always means less English because most people that learn English at a higher level, I would say the majority of the time is because they want to work in the tourist industry. Myanmar surprised me when I visited the country in 2015. They passed the taxi driver test. I can remember talking to at least two taxi drivers there. I thought their English was quite good, especially considering that tourism wasn't really a thing there for a very long time. Laos also relies on tourism. About 12% of their GDP comes from it. But I do think their education system isn't quite up to the standards of the rest of Southeast Asia. So that probably holds them back a little bit. But in places like Luang Prabang, it's a tourist town, so... Most people who are there working in that industry will know English. When we were in Laos, we stayed in a few guest houses where no one spoke English at all. So I would say that generally their English levels are a little bit lower than Cambodia and Thailand's. We just recently got back from a trip to Indonesia and they also passed the taxi driver test. There were a few places that we went, restaurants that we went to where no one spoke English. I struggled with some street food vendors, but the great thing about Indonesia is that you can learn how to read a menu fairly quickly. The same can be said for Malaysia as their languages are very similar. If the country uses a Roman alphabet, it's just so much easier to be able to read and recognize words and learn words. Another good example of this would be Vietnam. They also use a Roman alphabet. So you can imagine trying to learn this menu versus this menu that's in Thai or this one that's in Khmer. After seeing pho ba on a menu five times, you're probably gonna realize that ba means beef and you're probably gonna remember that. But then seeing this, I doubt you're gonna recognize or even register that. It's just like squiggly lines. Vietnam was closed off to foreign travelers for a, quite a long time, and they actually eased their visa requirements back in 1993, so that's when tourism started flowing into the country more. Tourism only accounts for about 5-6% to 6 of their GDP, so I think speaking English there probably isn't as important as it is in neighboring countries. Probably everybody in the hospitality industry will speak English there, but they probably aren't going to pass the taxi driver test. I also think that the Vietnamese probably have a little bit more trouble pronouncing some English words. Actually, I have a theory about this that probably doesn't check out, but I'll put it out there anyways. The more tones a language has, the harder it is for a native speaker of that language to nail English pronunciation. I know it's a wild, crazy theory. Vietnam has six tones, Thailand has five, Myanmar has four. Meanwhile, Khmer, Malay, and Indonesia have zero tones. They are not a tonal language, so you might find the pronunciation a bit better in those countries. Feel free to poop on that theory in the comments below. In all these countries, there's a very good chance that the doctors will speak English. I think I've been to the doctor in about seven different countries, and the only doctor I came across that didn't speak English was in China. A lot of pharmacists will know at least a little bit of English. I think they learn the names of the medicines in English. In my experience in these countries, the police don't speak much English at all. There was a bit of miscommunication when the, the strip search happened. Um, yeah, the, not, not high English levels by the police. Usually younger people speak more English than the older folks, although if they're too young, they won't speak any language at all. Babies can't talk. You should also remember that in most of these countries, the biggest tourist numbers don't come from an English-speaking country. They come from China. Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Singapore all see more Chinese tourists than any other nation, and it's not even close for most of these countries. If we just look at Thailand, the most popular Southeast Asian country to travel to, China, Malaysia, India, South Korea, Laos, Japan, and Russia are all putting up bigger tourist numbers than the U.S., if you combine all the native English-speaking countries, the number still pales in comparison to the number of Chinese tourists that visit Thailand in a year. We really should consider ourselves lucky that so many people in Southeast Asia speak English. Yes, English is the most widely spoken language in the entire world, but if you just look at the numbers for native English speakers, English is behind both Mandarin and Spanish. 1.452 billion people can speak English, but only 373 million people are native to the language, which means 1 billion 79 million people had to learn the language. And you won't even learn the metric system. 
I've had so many lost in translation moments while traveling. I've eaten meals that I didn't want. I've gotten lost after getting directions in sign language. Okay, but how far is that? Is that two blocks? Is that one block? I've been in situations where it looked like all was lost. I couldn't speak any of their language. They couldn't speak any English. My hand gestures weren't working. I need you to get me a protein shake. But almost always to the rescue came somebody who was willing to help. After 12 years of studying English, I finally get to be the hero. A few tips for you. Keep it simple. Don't use complicated language. Don't use slang. Don't use idioms. Don't be the person who's like, I want this, but I want it like this. Can I get the chicken cashew stir fry, but without cashews? Just eat the cashews. And if you're allergic to the cashews, then just eat them and die. Just make sure to do it somewhere over there, away from the table. Some people will tell you to learn some of the local language of the country you're going to. I would say yes, learn thank you, hello, and use those words as a sign of respect, but I wouldn't go too much further than that. Unless you're planning on spending a considerable amount of time in the country, you're probably not gonna learn enough to be able to communicate in the way you need to, unless you're some kind of super brain person, but come on, you're average brained at best. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. Big thanks to Musto for helping me out with this one. Subscribe to his channel, Musto Invest in Cambodia, and take care. Comb your hair, or as they say in Vietnamese, Bảo